I'm also thankful that he's kept me in his hands. I can look back on moments in my life when I was in moments of temptation that if I would have made one decision differently, one decision, it would have totally, totally altered my life. Not for the good. And the Lord mercifully kept me and preserved me. Third, he is our benefactor. What does that mean? It means he's the supplier. All good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. If you have abilities and skills and talents, guess where you got them? You didn't make them on your own. If you're able to make a good living, provide for your family, guess why? Because he provided that within you. We, we make nothing of ourselves. We don't know how to live. We don't know how to love. He is the one who provides all of these things to us. He is your benefactor. He is the supply of everything that we have. He is our redeemer. If we were left to the proper penalties of our choices, we would be in trouble. But he, by his mercy, he, by his love, took our sins upon himself. I had a wonderful moment on Tuesday evening, on Monday evening. We had a great bingo night. We had the largest group we've ever had. We had, what, Susan, 80 at least, I think? 22 workers. 22 workers at least. <coughs> had a great night. We had to change some things just because of the size of the group. I mean, we, uh, our, our rule is everybody wins. It's, it's one of those nights we just do it to give away stuff. Uh, but, it, but I figured out if we had to win 80 games of bingo, we'd still be playing bingo. <laughs> so we had to change a few things. So when, when someone won, their whole table won. And, and we, we made it pretty well. And a gentleman was waiting for me at the end of the night. And some others thought what I thought. He said, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? And my first thought was, he wants money. Others thought. One, someone even said, I was angry because they were aggravating you for money at the end of bingo. We went into a Sunday school room and uh, introduced myself, and he introduced himself to me. He said, my name is Herbie. I said, what? <laughs> he said, my name is Herbie. He started to tell me the story of his life, how that he had squandered so much of God's blessings, raised in a Christian home, but had failed in so many arenas of his life. And he said, I want, I want to get saved, but I don't think God will even have me. He said, why would he? He said, after all I've done, why would he? And I told him about Calvary, which he knew about. I said, but let me tell you about the worst pain of the cross was not the nails, was not the whip that preceded, was not the spear, was not the plucking of the beard or the thorns on his brow. The worst pain of the cross was your sin and mine. Jesus took upon himself the sin of every one. And that sin, by the requirement of the word, had penalty. And it wasn't that Jesus took an eraser and said, okay, I'll just erase everybody's sin and nobody will have to pay. That's not what happened. Jesus said, I'll pay. So that your sins could be forgiven. And that was not without Probably a pain that we could not even conceive. He is our redeemer. Say, Pastor, you left these notes. Yeah, I did. That's okay. He's gone. He won't matter. <laughs> and then last, what is God in relation to us? He will be our judge. Every one of us will stand before the righteous judge. Give an account to our life. Everyone. All that 
everybody here. Good and faithful servant. Why should we serve God? Number one, it's our duty to serve Him. Number two, we should serve Him in honor of His great character. Number three, we should serve Him because it is in our best interest to do so. And then the last proposition is what profit should we expect? If we pray to him. Number one, we may expect to enjoy all the spiritual blessings promised in the gospel of his son. Conversion, adoption, sanctification, resurrection, acquittal, grace, sustenance. We can expect it because it's a part. We may expect that God will give us just as much of the good things of this world as is best for us to possess. I felt like that was one of the richest sentences of this whole thing. Let me read it one more time. We can expect that God will give us just as much of the good things of this world as is best for us to possess. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Remember in this is being preached in 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, this is the way that Pastor Ruth finished his message. But we may, what may we expect in regard to our nation? Difficulties. We may expect to endow the heads of our rulers with wisdom. That's what we need to be praying for, even today. We need to pray that their hearts be filled with virtue, that they may rule in righteousness, that he will give success to the arms used in defense of the union, that he will subdue the malice rankings and the rest of the insurgents, and that the union will be preserved and that peace will reign. So as we move into our week of Thanksgiving, first of all, be thankful for who God is. Be reminded of all that he is. Be reminded of what kind of relationship you have with him. What he has done for you, what he will do for you. And then pray for God's will, for God's blessing, for God's intervention for the land in which we live. Thank you, Pastor Ruth. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Tell me what Would you stand if you would like to take your hand up and turn to page 178? Let us sing the hymn. Thanks for the great